another important thing that actually um, permeated the thought of Darwin during his time is the idea of heredity or the study of how traits are passed on across generations. So it's going to be very important for Darwin the idea of progeny and, and offspring or the idea that children are the outcome of parents which are called progenitors and that they will share it, traits from their parents. And that these traits will pass from generation to generation, which is a group of offspring born from one or many parents around the same time period. Now, what you will notice, and this has everything to do with heredity and genetics, is that there's going to be a lot of variation within populations. Look here, for example, how many kinds of finches he actually saw in the Galapagos Islands. He also noticed how many different kinds of ladybugs there are. They might look, look the same, but when you put them next to each other, you realize they're not the same at all. Look, for example, at these snails and how they're all very varied, many different kinds of species of snails. In other words, there is variation both within and between species uh, in life. And now we actually understand, though Darwin did not during his time, that this variation is caused by random mutations uh, or changes in the DNA sequence that happen because of radiation, mistakes or systemic processes, errors, or exposure to chemicals and things like that. Now we actually understand that these mutations will change either the sequence or the structure of the chromosome, or even the number of chromosomes, and things like a nuploidy or polyploidy, which will lead to the formation of new species as the actual DNA is changed. And that these changes in genetic structure or sequence is actually what drives the process of change or variation. Now, Darwin may not have known this, but we know that now. And that's going to be a very important concept that we discuss evolution. In other words, the source of that variation, which is key for natural selection, is going to be uh, on changes to the composition of, of or genetic composition. Or in other words, changes in the number, structure, or sequence of genes or chromosomes. Now, this is actually what creates the idea of adaptations. Now remember, of course, that in terms of genetics, we are, what we learned that mutations can also be silent, that they can happen, but not change the phenotype. And that's not going to affect evolution, of course, because evolution depends on the actual variation that causes differentiation between animals and therefore different uh, responses to the pressure of the environment. So if the mutation is silent, it's not going to affect anything. Likewise, if the mutation is neutral, or a change uh, to, to the organism that does not count an advantage or disadvantage, it's not going to actually affect evolutionary process. Likewise, if the mutation is going to be somatic or in a cell that is only going to be affecting the progenitor and it's not passed on to the offspring, that's also not going to affect evolution. This means somatic, silent, or neutral mutations are not going to be part of what we talk about in evolution. On the in contrast, germline mutations, which happen in germ cells, which originate the sex cells, are going to be inheritable and therefore are going to affect evolution. Likewise, missense or nonsense mutations, which are mutations that change the phenotype by either changing the protein structure and function, like a missense mutation, or by disabling the protein or not making the protein at all, like a nonsense mutation, will definitely cause changes in the phenotype and therefore affect evolutionary processes, especially if they cause changes which are considered either deleterious or beneficial. Deleterious are, of course, mutations that hurt the chance of the animal to survive, and beneficial mutations are mutations that help the animal survive. Now, remember that 90% of all mutations are going to be lethal, and of the 10% which are not, the majority of them, the vast majority, are going to be deleterious and cause problems for the animals. But in certain circumstances, it is possible to generate something that actually makes the animal more likely to survive a certain environment, especially if the environment changes from its previous circumstance. Now, remember, something that was deleterious before may become beneficial later if the environment changes. Now, speaking of that, uh, and speaking about deleterious and advantageous comes the idea of adaptation. Adaptations are variations which increase the animal's chance of survival. And there are basically two kinds of adaptations. You have physical adaptations, which are ad 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 advantages based on structural variation, you know, such as, for example, body parts, uh, ability to camouflage, warning colorations, uh, speed, size, venom. I can go on. Everything that's structural about life that makes a certain life form more likely to survive, like the features you see here about the beak of the bird, actually 
has everything to do about its chances of survival. There's also behavioral adaptations or advantages based on action patterns, which are often imprinted or things that animals do because they're programmed genetically to do so, such as migration, hibernation, hunting, grazing, herding, and uh, camouflaging, uh, fighting, all these kinds of behaviors uh, that actually have, were learned or imprinted by the animal in order to enhance its actual chances of survival. We call that behavioral adaptations. So these are the things that are beneficial mutations leading to adaptations which make the animal more likely to survive. Now remember that these traits will be passed on from generation to generation and that as these traits are passed on and exposed to different environments, the environment is going to select them. And that's the idea that actual um, Darwin actually comes up with. And that these inheritance patterns are going to be very, very important in determining the favorable uh, off, uh, outcomes of the offspring. So inheritance is uh, crucial to his understanding as well of evolution. Although Darwin did not know about all of these detail in terms of mutations that we know about it today, he knew that there was variation. He didn't know how, what caused it and what it made it be passed on from generation to generation. But he knew that whatever caused it and however it was passed on, those changes were the key for evolution. And therefore, heredity and changes or variations, which we now know are caused by genetic mutations inheritable through sex cells, in which in the process of meiosis and sexual reproduction, have everything to do with the way that evolution actually works. Now, uh, another thing that was crucial for his understanding was that the actual idea of artificial selection, which is, uh, for example, on his time, thousands of dogs already existed. And all of these dogs exist because of the fact that we breed them to show specific traits. We like that trait, we breed that trait, and dogs that have that trait, and after a while, those traits become the more common traits in the population, of, uh, and then we create a new race or a new breed. And similarly, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kohlrabi, and kale all come from the same ancestral species. And what we have today is actually a variation of the original plant that developed all of these uh, subsequent species. Did you know the cauliflower, broccoli, kale, kohlrabi, and Brussels sprouts were all essentially from the same plant? By the way, this same original wild plant is nowhere around anymore. But we made cauliflower by focusing on creating more of these flowers, bigger and bigger. We made broccoli by focusing on the branching of the leaves. We made Brussels sprouts by focusing on the actual development of the of the stem and we made the kohlrabi by developing bigger and bigger uh, shoots or wider roots and we made kale by making larger and larger leaves and so by focusing on different aspects of the same mother plant we develop new kinds of plant and, and ironically the mother plant doesn't even exist anymore and similarly the first original dog breed whatever the first dog was doesn't exist and instead we have all these different dogs around the world by the way the cavalier right there that I have and I also have an Australian Shepherd and you may have just heard him barking in the background they were mad about something but either way artificial selection is going to be another one of the important concepts that's going to be in Darwin's mind as he thinks about evolution uh, the fact that we by selecting certain traits can change the way that things actually look uh, interesting factoid, by the way, the corn and the wheat that exist today are nothing like the original corns and wheat that our forefathers and going back thousands of years used to be using because we have done artificial selection to enhance the productivity and resistance to, to pesticides and resistance to pests so that the corns and wheat that look today have more yield and more resistance than the ones before and they look nothing like the originals. And so these are just examples of how what you can do to artificial selection. So Darwin had all these concepts in his mind before he comes up with the theory of evolution. He was influenced by geology and paleontology, by ecology and economics, and by genetics, heredity, or, or changes, or how, how these things are passed on from generation to generation. And you, you as a person need to understand all these concepts in order to understand how evolution actually works. So we view these videos very well so you're ready to actually understand what evolution is and how it works. All right? I hope I got you in a little bit into the mindset that Darwin had in its time, although he didn't know as much about genetics as we know today. He did know about variation, and he did know about population limitations because of, of, of pressures from the environment with limited resources. He did know that the earth was changing, you know, all of these concepts. 
And we're going to review this as we talk about his theory of evolution on the next video. I'll see you guys then.